Today we're going to discuss how to inspect and how to properly don your full body harness. Before you use any part of a personal fall arrest system, you're required to inspect it. If you find anything wrong with the equipment, if it does not pass the inspection, you must take it out of service. Before you start the inspection, you want to grab the harness by the back dorsal D-ring, raise it up, and shake it. What this will do is allow the leg straps to fall downward where they need to be. If it's a little bit jumbled up, giving it a shake will smooth out the harness so it can hang correctly. The first things you want to look at are the impact indicators. On a harness, there are two of them. You can see that it's just webbing, folded over, and it says impact indicator. If the impact indicator is neither there or has been exposed, stop the inspection and remove the harness from service. Next, you'll want to inspect the labels. If you cannot read the labels, you cannot use that harness. It must be taken out of service. When inspecting hardware, we'll start from the top and work our way down. First, look at the back dorsal D-ring. Make sure there's no major bends, cracks, or discoloration. Next, check your chest strap. Make sure that the quick connect or mating buckle is able to close and stay closed. If it's a quick connect, it needs to be able to lock into itself and the green dot will tell you that it has in fact locked. You want to make sure that it cannot come loose. For the mating buckle, you pass the buckle through the slot and give it a couple of short pulls to make sure it will stay in place as well. The next thing you'll be inspecting are your adjusters. Mating buckle adjusters or rolling friction buckle adjusters. On the roller, keep in mind that any piece of hardware that has a spring or roller, the roller has to roll and the spring has to function. With the mating buckle adjusters, make sure that the webbing freely passes through and it can lock down. Now let's look at the leg straps. There are three types of leg buckles for harnesses. Tongue and buckle, mating buckle, and the quick connect. If it's a tongue and buckle, look at the grommets. Look for cracked, bent, or missing grommets. You also want to make sure that the tongue and buckle sets neatly by itself and against the gate, so it doesn't move against the bar. Look at it. If the bar has rotation and you are able to spin it, you need to make sure it can spin and it's not bent. If it's a quick connect, just like with the chest strap we reviewed earlier, it needs to be able to lock into itself so the green dot shows and it has been locked. Again for the mating buckle, you pass the buckle through the slot and give it a couple short pulls to make sure it will stay in place. Okay, let's talk about webbing. You always want to do this inspection without your gloves on. First, an easy one is tears, holes, or discoloration of the webbing. Grasp the webbing with your hands and bend it in an inverted U fashion, checking both sides. This creates surface tension, making damaged fibers or cuts easier to see. Remember to inspect both sides of the webbing. Webbing damage may not show up by just looking at it. Run your hands down the webbing to feel for any hard, shiny spots caused by heat damage. Or feel free to make sure the thickness of the webbing is uniform. If it thins in places or shows signs of undue stretching, that could indicate it has been subject to a fall. Then, you also want to make sure the edges are not worn down too much. If you've got 10% of wear on the outside of the webbing, then it needs to be removed from service. A key thing to look at is the stitching. Make sure you don't have any loose or missing stitches. One place many people tend to forget to look at is the sub-pelvic strap. Underneath there gets a lot of wear, so be sure to check all of your stitching on your harness. Now that we have fully inspected our harness and confirmed that it has passed inspection, we're ready to don the harness. Again, hold the harness by the dorsal D-ring and locate the chest strap. Now, just like putting on a shirt, slip one arm through one side, then the other arm through the other side. So the dorsal D-ring is at your back. You do not want to secure the chest strap just yet. From here, you'll want to adjust the harness from the bottom up. This is the best way to get a proper fit. First, ensure that the sub-pelvic strap is hanging just below the buttocks so that when you fall, the bulk of your weight will get caught by the subpelvic strap. That's your strongest support area. You can adjust the height of your subpelvic strap by adjusting your torso adjusters. Now that the subpelvic strap is in place, you can move on to securing the leg straps. Whether you're using tongue buckles, mating buckles, or quick connects, it's all the same. You want them tight enough where it's tight to put two to three fingers between you and the leg strap. If the straps are too loose, you could be subjected to serious injury during a fall. Once you have both leg straps in place, double check the torso adjustment to make sure the subpelvic strap is still correctly positioned. Then you're ready to go to the chest strap. The chest strap should set straight across your chest cavity. You don't want the chest strap to be too low or you could roll out. You also don't want it to be too high because if you do take a fall, the harness could move up and it could actually come up under your chin and cause damage. But straight and tight against the center of the chest is where it needs to be. 
This is what can keep you from slipping out of the harness if you fall head over heels. Now that you've got your harness on and it's adjusted properly, let's talk about caring for your harness. It's very simple. Store your harness in a cool, dry place, out of direct sunlight, and away from chemicals. If the webbing gets dirty, it can be cleaned with mild soap and water and then hung to dry. And that's it. If you've got any questions or need additional product information, please give us a call or visit us at falltech.com.